Welcome to the Saber RD online training course. This series of fast-paced videos will teach you the full power of the Saber RD simulation environment. In this section, we explore model characterization. Simulation requires accurate models for every circuit element, but some key components require more detailed models. For these cases, Saber provides a rich set of model characterization tools. An important subset of these tools is devoted to power semiconductor models. These tools generate models with more detailed behavior than manufactured supplied macro models. Using its straightforward process, you create precise models in less than an hour. A manufacturer's datasheet is the best representation of device behavior. Saber's characterization tools create models that match the datasheet. Characterization starts by importing datasheet specifications and waveforms. With an initial set of parameters, an optimizer exercises the model and compares the results to the datasheet. It analyzes the difference and adjusts the parameters. The optimizer iterates through this process until the model's characteristics match those of the datasheet. When Sabre finishes optimization, it packages the model structure, its unique parameter set, and a schematic symbol into the finished component. Let's look further into model characterization for a power MOSFET. From the Modeling Tools palette, we launch the MOSFET tool. The interface is divided into three sections. The columns along the left side are specifications from the datasheet. Model parameters generated by the optimizer are listed along the right side. The middle section compares model performance to the datasheet specifications. Let's work through a model characterization example. Here is the datasheet for a power MOSFET from Infineon. We start by setting the device configuration. It's an N-channel device with a body diode that has an avalanche breakdown and specifications for reverse recovery. It's time to gather information from the datasheet. In the specifications list, blue boxes represent plots. White boxes are for numerical values. We start with the diode IV plot. We find the plot matching the specification in the middle section. A grid layout button under the View tab changes the number of the plots shown. Scrolling finds the diode IV plot. The Define Target Curves button invokes the scanned data utility. We need a digital image of the plot from the datasheet. We use the Windows utility Snip and Sketch to create a PNG format image. This is done for all six plots we need from the datasheet. We load the diode IV image and expand the window size. Next, we adjust the blue bounding box boundaries to the edges of the graph. Now, we define the axes by selecting the Edit Axis button. First, we set the x-axis to a range starting at 0 volts and ending at 1.5 volts. Then, we change the y-axis range from 0.1 to 1000 using a logarithmic scale. It's time to trace the curve by selecting the Create New Curve button. We'll trace the 25-degree curve by choosing points that define the shape of the curve. Double-clicking the last point ends the tracing. We adjust the initial tracing by selecting the curve and then moving individual points. Points can be inserted or deleted by selecting the curve and accessing the local menu with the right mouse button. We press the Save icon to preserve our work and exit the scanned data utility with the OK button. A check mark in the blue box indicates the diode IV specification is complete. The diode IV plot now shows three different curves. A faint gray dashed line represents the curve that was just traced. A solid blue line represents the simulated plot after each optimization step. The yellow dashed line is an anchor point for the on resistance setting. Though it can be moved manually, we'll let the optimizer move it automatically. Our final task for this plot is specifying the swept values for the forward voltage. We define a range of 0 to 1.5 volts with 100 linearly spaced steps. The criteria for choosing these values is to ensure that the blue simulated curve spans the same range as the gray dashed curve from the datasheet. The next plot is the drain current versus the drain to source voltage. Five curves correspond to different gate voltages. The gate voltage is specified in the legend along the right side. The colors of the gate voltages match that of the curves. The third plot is the drain current versus the gate to source voltage. 
Next is a plot of the on resistance of drain to source path versus the drain current. Here are the plots of the input, output, and reverse transfer capacitance versus the drain to source voltage. The final plot is the gate to source voltages versus the gate charge. The rest of the specifications are numerical values from the datasheet. Three specs pertain to the body diode's reverse recovery. The datasheet only specifies a reverse recovery charge of 5 nanocoulombs, so the other two are left blank. Two test setup values pulled from the datasheet are included with the plot. The diode reverse recovery plot differs from the others in that we do not import an image from the datasheet. Instead, we define it only by numerical specifications. The remaining specifications help develop a test bench, but are not required to create the model. We leave them blank. The last specification is the drain source breakdown voltage. The datasheet value directly matches a model parameter and thus does not require optimization. It is typed directly into the parameter section and locked, ensuring it will not vary during optimization. We launch the optimizer by going to its tab and selecting Run Optimizer. By default, the specifications are divided into optimization groups and put into the most efficient order. For this example, there are four active groups and one blank group. When a group is being optimized, the corresponding group number flashes. This column tracks optimizer progress, but the best way to monitor the process is by watching the model curves align with those from the datasheet. Running the optimizer additional times can further reduce the difference between the datasheet and the model. We can run the optimizer for one group at a time by accessing a local menu with the right-hand mouse button. If the optimizer is having difficulty getting a good match to the datasheet curves, it may help to intervene. In such cases, stop the optimizer, go to the plot in question, and move the various anchor points manually to align the plots to the traced area, then restart the optimizer. We can manually alter model parameters between optimizations. This tactic may be effective if you have parameter values from similar devices. Optimizer convergence problems are many times due to data entry mistakes or conflicting datasheet specifications. If specifications are in conflict, delete or alter one of the specifications. We can add other features to the new MOSFET model. Adding maximum operating conditions from the datasheet enables stress analysis. Specifying parameter tolerances enables variation during Monte Carlo analysis. A powerful feature of Sabre's model characterization is temperature-dependent operation. We can add both static and dynamic temperature effects. The data sheet shows two curves for 150-degree operation. We'll add a new specification tab for this temperature. We start by loading the existing curves from the 25-degree tab into the 150-degree tab. The reverse recovery charge to the body diode is set to the same value as at 25 degrees. We open the IV curve for the body diode. All the points on the 25 degree curve are moved to the 150 degree curve. The new specification is saved as a different file for 150 degrees. The same process is done for the drain current versus gate voltage specifications. We run the optimizer. The model is now defined for a set of static thermal conditions. If the junction temperature is set somewhere between 25 and 150 degrees, the model is linearly interpreted. This is called static thermal specification because there is no self-heating of the device. Dynamic thermal specification accounts for self-heating. This is done by specifying the thermal impedance between the device junction and ambient temperature. If the thermal impedance is available from the datasheet, the characterization tool can generate a thermal network for the model. We create a thermal model by selecting it from the Model tab. We choose the one-port dynamic model with thermal impedance. Like the previous specifications, we use curves from the datasheet. The curves are traced, with each curve representing a different duty cycle.
The network is a cascaded set of thermal resistors and capacitors. By default, the order of the network is 6. Executing the optimizer matches the network to the datasheet. The characterization is finished. The model schematic shows a thermal network has been added. Selecting Save generates the model and its symbol. Place Part adds the device to the schematic. The device has three electrical pins and one thermal pin. We can connect the thermal pin to a thermal source of 25 degrees or thermal components such as a heatsink. Access the Saber User Manual from the tool interface to learn more about model characterization. Examine the included component examples to increase your understanding of the Saber model characterization tools. This concludes this section of the Saber RD online training course. To download a free student version of Saber RD, go to the Synopsys website. To further your understanding of this material, go through the lab exercises found at the link listed in the description of this video.